guys and welcome back to the channel Irish Eyes here so today I'm going to take you around Enniscorthy Cathedral it's known as St Aidan's Cathedral in Enniscorthy and it's a beautiful cathedral with fine monuments so guys here we are and this is the cathedral and the graveyard area which is absolutely stunning and as you can see some fine monuments here so we will have a look around and show you guys but first of all we'll go this way there's a few up here I just want to show you on the way in I noticed so we'll go along and have a look and there in the background you can see over there is called Vinegar Hill where the battle happened in 1798 rebellion the Vinegar Hill battle I'll give you a better look at the cathedral this is St. Aidan's Cathedral and it's a fine example of a cathedral and if I get a chance guys later I'll take you inside the cathedral and we can have a look inside as well so there's one or two here I want to show you and just here guys we have a little marble Back. and it says in proud and loving memory of volunteer Thomas Stokes age 24 died as a result of imprisonment and consequent ill health a member of the 1st Battalion Enniscorthy Irish Volunteers took part in the 1916 rise in Enniscorthy detained in English jails after rising and Frongoch internment camp Wales released in December 1916 after his health began to fail after returning to Enniscorthy he again fell ill in July and died 29th of September 1917 laid to rest with full military honours by the volunteers And we'll just have a look at the, the grave here. And it's very hard to read the writing, it's kind of faded on it. But you can see a lovely photograph here of Thomas, who was involved in the 1916 Rising. It's a marvellous looking picture of Thomas. That's the St. Aidan's Cathedral, guys. He's laid to rest right beside this beautiful cathedral. So, guys, I've just came to this one here first. And it's a stone slab-looking monument grave area. And on the entrance... And I don't think there was ever a gate or anything here, it doesn't look like it. But on down here, on this, you can see some symbols on it. I'm not sure what that means. It's the same on the other side. And when we go in, we see this at the bottom of it here. You see the eagle at the top and a castle then underneath the eagle. Isn't that lovely looking? I'm going to see, can I read what it says on it? And it looks like to me that could be like Latin writing and that so if anybody understands Latin, because I certainly don't, guys. But I see a date here, 1938. And I see a 1918 as well. But 
but it's a beautiful resting area and I'm sure maybe by looking at it it could be a priest that was maybe a priest in the area that's laid to rest here so as we go in here guys we'll have a look around now this graveyard is is very very nice you can see all the trees and the headstones in between them and it's a, a lovely little graveyard here in Enniscorthy fine tombstones in it and this one here has the sacred heart and it's a Celtic cross with, his, with a sacred heart in loving memory of Matthew Tracy Cathedral Street who died 1912 also his granddaughter Kathleen who died in 1915 aged one and a half years old and his wife Margaret died September 1925 aged 76 also their son John J died in 1972 aged 84 and there's a list of other family members there as well but somebody has left lovely daffodils here at the grave for these family members and just next door to this one we have another fine Celtic cross with the sacred heart in the middle of it and the cathedral there as you can see in the background and this is the final resting place of Patrick Kavanagh who died 1912 aged 30 years old also his brother Charles died in 1922 aged 45 so two young brothers here laid to rest so the weather is fine here today guys we're lucky it's St Patrick's Day today so I want to wish everybody a happy St Patrick's Day and I hope you're all keeping well and look at this one with the railing around it isn't that lovely to see fine work the railing that goes around it and you can see the old trees where they were cut here they're grown inside the gravesite and it's another Celtic cross and this one has a lot of lichen on it A lot of Celtic crosses in this graveyard. And see, can I read this? Sacred to the memory of Margaret Maguire, who died in 1874, aged 54 years old. And there's a Maria Maguire there, who died in 18, looks like 83, aged 74 years old. So a very, very old Celtic cross and grave here in the 1800s. So we'll just take you over this area here and read some more. And here's a small little cross here. And I'm not sure if there's any inscriptions on this one. I don't see any writing on this. And look at this one. Isn't this absolutely beautiful here? There's a holly bush growing inside the railings in the grave area. And it's a, an obelisk type headstone which is rather spectacular looking and we're going we'll get around and have a look at the other side see can we read any names on it and you can see where the railing has broken away here on it And it says, in memory of John Hoare, died June 
1868, age 85 years old. It's a beautiful headstone. And the scenery in the background there as well. Look at that. St. Aidan's Cathedral. And I have been here before, but I just never vlogged it. So I'm happy that I came today to vlog it for you guys. Because it's a beautiful graveyard. And you can see here, look, there's more holly trees here. And holly bushes. And they have the lovely red berries on them. And that one has just taken over the grave here. The holly, because the railing has broken away. And there's a big holly bush growing inside of the grave area. And I'll just read this headstone here. Erected by Patrick Leary of Enniscorthy in memory of his sister Mary, who died October 1864 age 70 years old and is the Lamb of God at the top of the headstone and it's a beautiful final resting place as far as I know so far these headstones are the 1800s I see one here 1870 And it looks like on this, Michael O'Neill departed this life January 1870, age 54 years old. And there you can see some of that lovely fine engravements on that headstone. And I've spotted one here, guys, I want to read. And I'll show you in a second. Of your charity, pray for the soul of Michael Keating, who departed this life in 1866, aged 75 years old. And his wife, Anastasia Keating, who departed this life 1874, aged 85 years old. And their grandson, Matthew, aged 8 years old. Also their daughter, Mary, who died in 1885, aged 59. And I just love the colours on this one here. The lichen. I see a lot of headstones with lichen and you know you have white, lichen, orange, all different colours. So I just spotted this one guys here and because it's St. Patrick's Day today, this gravestone here is very fitting for the day that's in it. Because as we can see, on the gravestone here we have lovely shamrocks and there's four shamrocks or could be clovers four leaf clovers on this and it's kind of hard to read but i'm going to read it for you guys with the lamp erected by a few friends in memory of peter mcdonald of enniscorthy who departed this life in 1860, aged 40 years old. So erected by a few friends, it says. So his friends erected this headstone in memory of him. And isn't it just a fine headstone with all the details that's on it? And they've kind of faded away, but still beautiful, no doubt. And here we have one, and it looks like the top is missing off this headstone here, or monument. You can see where it's missing off the top. The iron is at the top, and the part piece that was there is gone, maybe broke it away. And actually the piece of it is down here in the ground. You can just see it there, guys. So how that broke off the top of that would have to take a lot of force. So I'm not sure what happened there. And it says, 
of your charity, pray for the soul of Lachlan O'Leary, who died in 1891, aged 68 years. Also his infant son, John Joseph O'Leary, who died in 1876. And for the soul of Johanna O'Leary, wife of the above, Lachlan O'Leary died in 1820. Sorry, I think that's 1921 maybe age 79 years old so it's sad to see a fine monument with the top broken off and just lying on the ground like that but i'm sure there's no family in the area maybe anymore or anybody to fix it and just on the other side of it then it says pray for the soul of catherine o'leary and Eleanor O'Leary. So there's a few family members buried here. And there's the lovely holly again, as we've seen in the other area we were in. So guys, we'll keep going and we'll keep exploring this graveyard here. And see somebody has left lovely wreaths here with bows on them. Christmas looking wreaths and this headstone erected by Catherine Graham of her son Richard who died January 1866 age only 24 years old also her daughter Elizabeth who died November 1871 age 31 years old very young people and at the bottom part of it there it looks like it was touched up a bit like painted in the black writing you can see there her nephew-in-law Frank Lawler Gibbons who died in 1923 age 44 it's a lovely headstone and lovely reeds left for these young people and I see a lot of these headstones guys in here with the holly and it's just a very old graveyard, but beautiful looking graveyard. You see one under the tree here, and it's like it's sunken into the ground. And all it says here I can read is erected by John Fulham, it looks like. And I can't see any more writing on it, but it's sunk under the ground under this large, tall tree here. And here we have one with lichen, orange color lichen and this one and the lamb. I've seen that in lots of headstones, the Lamb of God, erected by William Sherman in memory of his father, Peter Sherman who departed this life in 1865, aged 60 years old, also the above named William Sherman, who died in 1868, aged 29 years old. And our mother Mary is interred here as well. And I'm going to try and make my way in here guys and there's holly here so we have this one here and there's artificial flowers left under it blue roses and it's like it's hidden away with these trees i'm going to try and read it for you guys And it says, in memory of Richard Cahan, who departed this life. I don't know if you can see that in there. 1867. Aged 30 years old. Also, his brother William. 1868. 1868 sorry age 33 years old and his brother James 1870 
age 38. So we have three young brothers interred here who all died really in a short space of time. And I wonder what the story was behind that or what happened to these three brothers in the 1800s. 1867, Richard died. And then William died 1868, a year later. And two years later after that, James died. Very young as well. Catherine died in 1829, aged 29 years old. So we have three brothers here and a sister, all died very young, in around the same time, or maybe a year or two apart. So that's very sad. Here's the example again, guys, of the lichen. The lichen has taken over this one. And you can see where the angels or the cherubs here are missing from where they're supposed to be. And the Lamb of God is supposed to be here and it's taken out of there. So I wonder how they were removed or what happened to those. And there's a piece missing off the top here as well. So a lot of damage on this one, but it's a fine headstone in memory of Margaret O'Brien who died 16th, April the 16th, 1867, age 42. Also her daughter Kate died in 1863, age seven years. Also Joanna O'Brien died February 1857, age 73, and Anastasia O'Brien died in 1872, age 13 years old. Also, Peter O'Brien died 1875, age 28 years old, and James O'Brien died 1876, age 58, it looks like. So, wow, a lot of family members young and old buried here. But isn't there a beautiful looking headstone though? All these headstones here are remarkable to look at. And here we have one with the railing around it and a stone cross on the inside. And that's what I was showing you guys in the one I just read where the cherubs and the Lamb of God have disappeared where they're supposed to be just here. So this one here has cherubs each side and beautiful designs on it, on this headstone. Have mercy on thy servant Mary Sinnott who departed this life in 1868, age 57 years old. Also, the soul of her son, David Alphonsus, who departed this life in 1858, aged 10 years old. What a beautiful, unusual name, Alphonsus, in 1858, was only 10 years old. And Peter Aloysius, who departed this life in 1875, age 49. Very unusual names, guys. I've never heard of those before. I've heard of Alphonsus, but I've never heard of Aloysius. And there's a stone marker down here underneath it, and it says, Have mercy on the soul of John A. Sinnott, solicitor in Enniscorthy who died on the Feast of All Souls. And it's hard to read the date on that. It's kind of faded away. Age 69 years old. But isn't that a fine monument 
with the cherubs and the Lamb of God on it. And there's St. Aidan's Cathedral, I'll give you a better view of it there, guys. And inside of this is absolutely stunning as well. So if I can get a chance to go inside, I will show you a quick little tour around the inside of the church. I believe there's lots of beautiful stained glass windows in there. So we'll just go around and read a few more guys before we go to the church. And there's another monument here with the top missing off this as well. So I see a lot of that here where there's monuments and tops are missing off them. And I suppose with age and time, you know, monuments do get damaged. Or it could be a case of vandalism, who knows, guys. And there's another headstone embedded with the tree wrapping itself and nature taking over. So there's if I'm not sure if there's any new headstones in here, but there is a lot of old ones. And here's another old one here. The top is left on the ground here. It's broken away from the top of it. And we'll read this one, guys. Erected in memory of her sister, Mary, in, erected this in memory of her sister, Bridget Sinnott, who died in 1859, aged 59 years old. And the top is missing off that. As you can see, a really fine headstone if it was fixed, I'm sure. There's a lot of these old ones, and I love these old ones with the, the old railing, iron railing going around them. They're a lovely sight to see. And that's another one with cherubs. You can see the cherubs on this one here. If I could just show you there, guys. There's the cherub's heads. Anne Joyce departed this life, 1853, age 45 years old. And that's covered in lichen as well. With a beautiful headstone and a lovely railing all around it. And this graveyard guys kind of reminds me of a very old victorian looking graveyard and i love the old graveyards there's a lot of history in them and there's enniscorty guys in the background there's another church just over there and that's all enniscorty town and i was i showed you earlier as well vinegar hill the battle on Vinegar Hill in 1798 rebellion took place on top of that hill. So a lot of history in this little town here in County Wexford. And there's a newer looking marble surround on this one. And it's the only new one I've seen so far in the area. In loving memory of Bernard and Cecilia O'Brien, remembered by their grandchildren. And there's no date or age or anything on that. So I'm going to go up along this way, guys, along the path. There's a beautiful pathway that brings you all around in the wall here, as you can see in the area. I'm just going to bring you around. And look at this old cross. And all the lovely moss that's gathered around it. And it's a really old cross, but I don't see any inscriptions on it. But I'm sure it's very, very old. And I see 
letters on it there, a J and a C. And I've seen these before where there's only letters on them. The J and the C is on that one. So I'm sure that's the surname, first name and surname of the person. There's a really old one as well. Top is broken away off this one, unfortunately. In memory, Anne Kavna, 1844, aged four years old. Also the remains of William Connor, who died in 1849, aged 48 years old. Jane, who died in 1861, aged 56 year old, years old. And somebody, it looks like, has put chalk on this to maybe be able to read the inscription a bit better. I've seen it before, people where they put chalk on graves to uh, bring the writing on the grave up a bit better to read it. So guys, I won't be long. More here, I can show you a little bit more before I go and hopefully see the inside of that cathedral for you guys because it's well worth having a look inside you can just see the area there all the old monuments and headstones and trees in the area the graveyard is absolutely stunning graveyard it really reminds me of an old Victorian style graveyard Here's a lovely cross, like the ones in the graveyard as well, with the lichen on it here running, the different colours on it. It's a beautiful cross. I don't think there's any name on it. I don't see any inscriptions on this either. It's a lovely cross. There's an awful lot of these with the railings around them. The monuments where the top is broken away. See the top is missing off this one here. And it's in there on the ground, just like the one over beyond we've seen as well. The top is missing off it. And I don't understand, I've never seen that before where to see so many monuments with the tops just gone off them. I'm sure it, it would take a lot of force to break a large piece of a monument off that. So I don't understand the reason behind it. But anyway, in the area, guys, I'm going to go up this way here now and take you around. as well with the cross on it, the bottom, it broke, a piece broke off it. A lovely monument at the top is complete on this one. And we'll have a read of this one, if we can read it. Erected by James Devereux, in memory of his beloved wife, Cecilia, who died in 1875, aged 70 years old and their son Thomas Augustine, who died 1849, age 18 years old. Isn't that just a lovely monument? And that big tall tree looking down on it. There's another one behind this railing here. And it says on this, pray for the soul of Nicholas. It's hard to read the surname. Where I see the seventh 
died in the 37th year of his age. And it's hard to see it's faded away. The year on it, with the little white cross on it. Fine monument. And this graveyard, guys, there's a walkway that goes all the way around it. And you can see on the sides of the walls, you have these lovely lanterns. And that even gives it a more Victorian look to the graveyard when you see these lanterns. Some beautiful lanterns in it. There's all those obelisks, monuments. And more of those lovely lanterns. So guys, what I'm going to do now is try and take you inside the cathedral and show you around the cathedral. The cathedral is absolutely stunning looking. And the sun is shining down on me today, so I'm so lucky with the weather on St. Patrick's Day today. Now, if I can, guys, I'll try and talk in the cathedral. But if there's people there, I might have to talk over the video and give you a bit of history, maybe if I can find it about the cathedral as well. Look at that fine crucifix scene here and cross of Jesus. And the nails in his feet and the blood and the fine detail the sculpture did to make this. There's a little information area here outside the cathedral, guys. So we'll have a look at this. Augustus Welby, Pope in 1812, is an outstanding exponent of the Gothic Revival style of architecture. You can see all the writing out there. The cathedral had been built on this site in 1809, but a few years later it was found to be too small for its congregation and in serious need of repair. In 1839, as part of the surge of church building which followed the granting of Catholic emancipation, Pugin was commissioned to design a new cathedral. 